Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. They say he was a great leader and a true friend. Tonight, teammates of a University of Pikeville player killed in an ATV crash are remembering him. I'm going to try to remember all the good things about him because he was just a wonder, wonderful individual. And in Lexington, friends and family are coping with the loss of a man killed in a hit and run. Just some pictures and stuff, but they're all burn up. And I agree, that you start all over. That's, you know, that's all we can do. A Powell County couple loses everything in an afternoon fire. Hear what the homeowner has to say about the loss. WKYT News at 11 starts now. A fire destroyed a Powell County home today. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Firefighters went out to a trailer on Bright Street around 1 this afternoon. No one was home when the fire started. WKYT's Jordan Valines found the homeowners, though, and was there as help poured in. She has our top story at 11. Larry Moorfield didn't want to believe what he heard. She called me and told me that it was, it was on fire. Didn't want to believe what he saw? I, was, I got to the school up there and I seen the smoke. But the harsh reality of the news sunk in. I just got I mean, sick in my stomach. It just, just sick. As he stood before what was left of the home that he had left only hours before. That was all we had. Moorfield and his wife were running errands Sunday afternoon when they got the news that their trailer where they'd lived for the past 12 years had caught fire, destroying almost everything they owned. We got some pictures and stuff, but they're all burned up. But as the hours passed by, sitting in my car, I mean, that's, you know, that's all I can do right now. Help began pouring in. Uh, we got hold of the Red Cross. They're going to be staying here at the local motel. Uh, the community also uh, got them some clothes for tonight. And, and although the Morpheus aren't sure what their long term plans will be, they do plan to take things. I wish that you start all over. That's, you know, that's all we can do. One day at a time. In Powell County, Jordan Valines, WKYT. No one was injured in the fire. In Lexington, several families are staying somewhere new tonight after an apartment fire damaged their homes. Firefighters battled flames at an apartment complex on Donnabrook Court around midnight. The fire, we're told, spread through the building and damaged two floors of apartments, including the basement. They're taking a look at video of the Lexington Fire Department shot of the flames. Crews say a man inside a top floor apartment was cooking on the stove when he fell asleep. That's when the fire spread from the stove to the wall and then through the ceiling of the apartment. When I first got up, uh, the railing, the paint on that railing was burning. That's how hot the fire was. And uh, downstairs and upstairs, the, the shutters were burning on the building. Firefighters say working smoke detectors helped save that man's life. Friends and family of a man killed in a hit and run are remembering him tonight. 23 year old Jacob Hamilton died this morning. The Fay County coroner says Hamilton was close to the bus stop on Liberty Road last night when a driver veered off the street and hit him. Crews rushed Hamilton to the hospital with life threatening injuries. This morning, friends paid tribute to Hamilton. I'm going to try to remember all the good things about him. Because he was just a wonder, wonderful individual overall. You could be having the worst of days and see him and your day would just turn around. We're told the driver later called police to turn himself in. They have not filed charges against the driver. They say they're still investigating. We now know the name of the man who died in a crash last night in Anderson County. The coroner tells us Logan Driscoll was driving down Wildcat Road when he crashed and flew out of his car. We're told Driscoll lived on that road. His body is now in Frankfurt for an autopsy. The average mild temperatures we had today and yesterday are about to head out of central Kentucky. Expect showers and even some signs of snowflakes in the work week forecast. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking those changes. Yeah, it's going to be a very active week, starting with tomorrow. First, we get in on the rain. Then the cold air starts to filter in, and we change our complete weather forecast up to snow. 
out there tonight, we're running in the 40s, for most of us at least. We're just two degrees below the average daytime high for this time of year. And here in Lexington, we're at 42. We should be around 44 for highs. Out there at the moment, you're going to find some low 40s and even a few upper 30s across southern and eastern parts of Kentucky. Defender, quiet here at home. We're not tracking any showers just yet. Those will arrive during the late afternoon and into the evening tomorrow. Now we throw the cloud cover on. And that's been with us all day. And it's just a blanket of clouds covering the entire Commonwealth. Our next system is out there, though. It's spinning across parts of the plains. There you see some of the showers, even some stronger thunderstorms have been associated with it so far. That low will continue to work its way toward the northeast, spreading that moisture into our area. Now, as we plan your Monday, you look ahead here. We'll throw our graphic up. You can see temperatures. We'll stay steady there in the 40s and right around 50 degrees. I think that's where we end up for highs. And then tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, we start tracking the rain into the area. But beyond that, it changes to snow chances. And I'll have that for you coming up in just a few minutes. An ex boyfriend arrested for the death of a young mother in Louisville. Deshaun Dorsey is accused of stabbing 24 year old Portia Mills multiple times. Mills was found dead Friday in a home near Churchill Downs. Police went to the home for a welfare check and found Mills's two-year-old son in the home with his mother's body. Family and friends are now raising funds for Mills's funeral expenses and her son Zayden through GoFundMe. The toddler's grandmother says she doesn't understand why anyone would do something like that. I really trust God that he's going to make it's going to be okay. Yeah. <laughs> this baby is going to get the best life possible. That I can give him if it takes the death of me. But I want to know, Deshaun, why would you kill his mother? Dorsey is charged with one count of murder. Police say he was Mills's live in boyfriend. Mills's family says they broke up last week. Tonight, Lexington police are trying to figure out who fired multiple gunshots through a neighborhood this weekend. Police say Saturday night, someone fired shots into a home on Freeman Drive. Two people were home at the time, but were not injured. We're told there was some minor damage to the house. And again, around 6.30 tonight, police say someone fired shots at those victims' cars on Freeman Drive. No one was injured then either. Police say the shooters did shatter the rear window of one of the cars. We have a reminder tonight for drivers in West Lexington. Tomorrow, crews will pick back up, blasting at New Circle and Old Frankfort Pike. The work is part of an ongoing widening project between Versailles Road and Leestown Road. Each time a blasting operation occurs, the roadway in that area will shut down for around 15 minutes. The blastings are scheduled to take place around 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., noon, and 1.30 p.m. We also have a traffic alert that will impact drivers in downtown Lexington. The next phase of the Centerpoint project will kick off tomorrow morning. It could bring traffic delays with it. All lanes of West Vine Street will close between South Upper Street and South Limestone starting at 9 a.m., and will remain closed until 9.30 a.m. An additional lane of West Main Street will be closed all day between Limestone and Upper Street. Two lanes of West Main Street will remain open. Police will be out directing traffic all week. Right now, it appears to be a hostage situation is unfolding inside a chocolate shop and cafe in Australia's largest city. New South Wales State Police are dealing with an armed incident in Sydney. Television footage shot through the cafe's windows shows several people with their arms in the air and hands pressed against the glass. Today marks two years since the tragic shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. 20 children and six teachers died in the shooting. The mother of a first grader killed says other mothers across the country also have broken hearts because of gun violence. Town leaders held no public memorial events to mark the day and instead made it a day of private reflection and remembrance. The Pond Creek Nation and the University of Pikeville are mourning the loss of an athlete. Tyler Williams was injured in an ATV accident Friday afternoon. He later died from his injuries. Williams was a baseball player at the University of Pikeville and a former football and baseball player at Belfry High School. Alex Casper Peak talked to his teammates and coach. Tyler Williams played football and baseball for Belfry High School and was a pitcher for the University of Pikeville. Jeremy Howard, Tyler's middle school principal, says Williams is the kind of guy he hopes his son turns out to be. I always just remember that, that, that personality that loved people, but he also just um, he was going to give you his best effort every time. Coaches and teammates say Tyler was a big part of the team. Coach says just a few weeks ago they were saying if you can't get along with Tyler, 
who Kenny get along with. There were no clicks with Tyler. Tyler was accepted. He accepted everybody on the team, and he was really a great leader in that standpoint. U Pikes baseball coach Chad Gassman says he brought the team together over the weekend to talk about Tyler's condition. A good team has become a family, and I feel like that's what we've become. And um, that, that's just what it was. It was just. It was just basically a family talking about their brother. Remembering the good during this painful time. Our first recruiting trip, he just had a, he had a football game that night for Belfry. And he came down and uh, he had a broken nose and black eyes and he had a football accident. And he was, I mean, but he was tough. And he was going to come down that recruiting trip no matter what. And I, I said, I looked at my assistant coach, I go, I love this kid. Coaches of Tyler say he was competitive, team-oriented, and always gave 100%. He's a fighter. He, um, he competed when he was on the mound, but he always competed the right way. Um, and even with the accident, he, he was fighting the whole way. We're going to miss him. That was Alex Casper Peak reporting. The University of Pikeville will hold a memorial service tomorrow at 5 in the chapel. Two Central Kentucky police forces are getting ready to equip their officers with body cameras. Versailles police will test the cameras next month, and Lexington police are expected to do the same soon. Richmond and University of Kentucky officers are wrapping up their trials on different models. Rio police already use the cameras. President Obama proposed reimbursing communities half the cost of buying cameras and storing video. Louisville officers are expected to test them soon, too. One New York woman firmly believes age is just a number. She just celebrated her 103rd birthday. Pearl Sutphin now lives in a senior living home. She still volunteers when she can at charities like the Arctic League and today the Salvation Army. She is an inspiration to many. Push myself as far as I can. I'm grateful that I can walk. And I do. I walk. I, take, I keep exercising, and that is the best thing to keep me on my feet. Sutfen celebrated her 103rd birthday last week.